Today, we are fixing the biggest issue I've had with this Tacoma since I built it. Brought to you in part by Cranbrook Toyota. For those of you who are new to the channel, this is my 2010 Toyota Tacoma. It's got the third gen facelift, but it also has one ton axles from an F-350. So it's a Dana 60 front and a sterling 10 and a half inch differential in the rear. And this rear end is where all of my problems lie. When I first got the pair of axles that are underneath this truck, I noticed that the rear end had a limited slip in it. So to save money during the build, I decided, you know what? We'll run with it. That's some form of a locker. What I've noticed is the limited slip works great if both tires have at least a little bit of traction. Around the street, going around corners, I can hear the ooh, ooh from the tires every once in a while. But off-road, specifically in the snow, when one tire loses traction, that's the tire that's getting power. It is not locking them up like I'd like it to be, which is why I got this guy. This here is a factory e-locker. This was available in like F-350s from 2011 to current model, I believe. And I picked this guy up for just over 400 bucks on Facebook Marketplace. Now, what the internet tells me is this guy, because it is a sterling 10 and a half locker, should work in pretty much any sterling 10 and a half, which is what is in the rear of this pickup. So in theory, I take the 513 gears off of my old carrier, slap them on this guy, throw it in, and uh, we're off to the races. Now I'm hoping because I'm going from a factory carrier to another factory carrier that I can just swap the gears over and it'll all be fine and dandy. <laughs> but I'm probably dreaming. My pattern will probably be out of spec or something. For now, I'm just gonna try it. I'm gonna set this up exactly how I set up the 513 nitro gears that are in this on here and hopefully they just work. But first, we gotta take off that cover and drain the gear oil. I am curious what my gear oil is gonna look like in there because my diff breather seems to have ejected itself at some point. Since I don't know when, this could have some water crossings in it. Water from snow wheeling this winter, I really don't know. Hopefully it looks all right. Ow! Oh. That's actually not that bad. Just a tiny bit milky, but like overall, I was expecting a lot worse. This ring gear and pinion seem to be in good shape. I did do one fluid change since I built this truck and that was just after the year break-in period to make sure it's all got fresh goodness. I just had a thought though, what if the e-locker doesn't use the thick ring gear and it uses the thinner style? Hopefully that's not the case because then I need to buy a new ring and pinion for this. Even though this is a thick cut and the gear set that's on that e-locker isn't, they seem to measure the same from mounting surface to the end of the bearing. So even though the gears in the truck are thick cut and these are clearly a lot more shallow. The distance from the flange to the outer, outer side of the bearing on this side and this side seem to be identical. So I don't see why I couldn't just throw this in here with the thick cut gears, even though this didn't have thick cut gears. I mean, what's the worst that's gonna happen? I'm gonna have to put the gears back on the limited slip carrier and put it all back in how it was. So I'm gonna proceed. Pull these axle shafts out. Just enough to clear the carrier and lose some gear oil. And walk it back. Walk it back. Back. So here both the carriers removed and you can see what I'm talking about with the thicker cut gear here versus this guy is is a fair bit thinner but as mentioned the measurement from the faces the face where it mounts to the end of the bearings neither one 
are identical. So I'm just gonna do a quick doop, floop, doop, there, and it'll be done. Also, if any of you are wondering what I'm using as a workbench here on my uh, Tacoma tailgate, this is a snail armor panel. It converts it from this like ridged plastic stuff to a aluminum flat surface. Much nicer to work on. And if you want to pick up one of these, I've got a link in the description below. And if you use coupon code Dirt Garage, it also saves you a bit of money. Before this guy's ready to drop into place, I got uh, I got to figure out what to do with this electrical. Because it's an e-locker, it needs power to actuate to turn it on, which means I need to figure out where to put a hole in my differential housing to run some wire through. And right now, my uh, leading theory for where to put a hole is like somewhere right there. So to run the wire through the diff, I picked up these guys. I think it's to go through sheet metal, but if I take the nut off and tap that hole that I made, you can see that'll thread straight in there. And then you can run the wire through that guy, and as you tighten this guy, the seal on the inside shrinks, and we'll be able to capture the wire that I picked up to run into the diff. Perfect. Now in theory, this guy's just gonna thread in. It's got its own seal on it, so should be good just to send it in, just like that. Now the plan for the electrical inside the diff is quite simple. I'm gonna use this guy, just a simple two wire plug. So I'm gonna take this plug off, solder in this plug, and then coming in from the differential side will be this guy, just poking through uh, with this wire. And this wire is just a simple two wire that will work inside these plugs. All right, gears moved over. The electrical all ready to go. Time we try to slap this sucker in the diff. Look at my drive shaft. I've got absolutely no clue when I did that. I haven't rock crawled this thing all winter. That could be at least like six months old and I've never noticed it. <laughs> this truck has done a fair bit of highway. That blows my mind. With that being said, we're on to the next step. I got some gear marking compound. Gonna check the pattern on that ring and pinion, make sure we're still good. Check out what happens when I go in the cab and I hit this button. It locks like it's supposed to. It's gonna be so much better than a limited slip. The pattern looks good. It's all wired up to the aux beam fuse panel in my engine bay. So I guess now we throw that cover back on and give it some gear oil. Now, before I put gear oil in it, I've jacked up the rear end just to do one more test. So now, if I spin one tire, this side shouldn't spin. So let's test that out. So right now, as you can tell, the dip is open. Let's go turn on the lock. So now, both tires, hey! So that would be a working locker. That's awesome. And back to open. Yep. Behind me here is a whole bunch of piles of dirt making all these little tiny mounds. And I think a good test for the walker will be, I'm gonna try to drive through this in two wheel drive open. And as soon as they start to get stuck, we'll throw the walker on and uh, well, give it a test. 